Rapper Tory Lanez is hosting the event. The doors just open. You can see the tents, the parking lot full of cars, a little bit of line at the front. Promoters are calling it the local kickoff to All Star Weekend. <clears throat> Here, um, can you go a little bit to your. Oh yeah, it might be nice. Oh crap, crap. There's a more of a line that way. Uh, nah, whatever you can see. I'm gonna mention a line, whichever one you can see more on whatever side. <clears throat> if fire and law enforcement officials find a business not meeting COVID safety measures, they risk fines. And then in the tag, I'm going to say a fire and law enforcement official, so I might motion to them if okay. they're still here. Um, for to so imagine trying to live in your house with a huge gaping hole. Fire and law enforcement Look officials find that slug not is bro. COVID safety measures. They were Are you kidding me? Complete Look closure. at the size of that slug, dude. Check, 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 check. Mm -hmm. One, two, one, two. One, two, three, four. Breaking news at 11, the Senate in a marathon debate on President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief plan. A live look now at the Senate floor. Republicans are stalling a vote by having the entire 628-page bill read aloud. The gimmick could take up to 10 hours. At the core of the bill, $1,400 stimulus checks for people making under $80,000 a year. Democrats vow to hold a vote this week. Also breaking, Atlanta police investigating after a man claims he was shot at Lenox Mall. Officers say he showed up at Emory Midtown tonight. Police haven't found any evidence that the shooting happened at the mall. And new tonight, huge parties underway in Metro Atlanta ahead of the NBA All-Star Game. Tonight, for the first time, Brookhaven is allowing bars to stay open until 4 a.m. CBS 46's Sierra Cummings live in DeKalb County and Sierra crowd concerns are growing. What are you seeing out there tonight? Well, we're at Medusa nightclub and we'll show you a look. The tits just went out, went up outside that club. Tory Lanez, the rapper, is actually the host for tonight. You can see a little bit of a line. We see the crowd with the cars. We've got police officers also in this parking lot, but party promoters are calling this the local kickoff to All Star Weekend. If the out of town license plates and flyers are any indication, the next three days across Atlanta means packed parties, visitors from all over. God bless, I hope so. 
I absolutely hope it does. <laughs> Jessica owns Rusty Nail, where sales dropped 45 percent. The bar is desperate for the all-star extra foot traffic. I would love to see business improve <laughs> back to what it used to be before this. The owner is grateful for Brookhaven's extension, allowing bars and restaurants to stay open as late as 4 a.m. this weekend. Almina Jones considers it a saving grace, too. Um, I'm hoping we benefit. The I restaurant we... owner knows officials will be doing customer capacity checks, but she says spots like hers plan to stick to safety measures from temperature checks to masks. If you feel uncomfortable, you know, I think you should stay home, but I mean, here we are going to do our precautions here to make sure everybody has a safe and enjoyable time. But locals like DeAsia Bailey are not convinced that All Star Weekend should go on. Should have at least like waited or something. With visitors coming from different states, different regions, the risks seem far greater. It's why she says the flyers promoting the largest or the biggest event for her are just another reminder to stay in. Yeah, they're doing too much. <laughs> they're doing entirely too much if they think everybody for the, oh yeah, no, I'm going home. And you know what? We mentioned that crowd control. We've got law enforcement out here and throughout the next few days, if fire and law enforcement officials find a business is not complying with COVID safety measures, they risk fines or even complete closures. Meanwhile, the mayor of Atlanta is encouraging everyone to just enjoy All Star Weekend as a televised event. Live in Brookhaven, I'm Sierra Cummings, CBS 46 News. Well, that is what Atlanta police don't want to see during All Star Weekend, a drive by shooting at a downtown bar. Bullet shattered windows at Oak Atlanta and Ivan Allen Jr. Boulevard this afternoon. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Police say a man left after a fight, but then came back with a gun firing shots as he drove by. We're not really sure of what happened, what it was. Uh, we don't have any bad business with anyone. We don't have any issues with anybody. Police are interviewing witnesses and looking at surveillance video. New at 11, a huge tree crashes into a couple's bedroom. They survived, but four months later, it's still not fixed. The couple says the city won't give them a permit to make the repairs. CBS 46, Jamie Kennedy, live tonight in Atlanta. And Jamie, this couple is beyond frustrated. Yeah, absolutely, Sean, because imagine trying to live in your house with a huge gaping hole from a tree like this and for months. Well, Jason Warsaw doesn't have to imagine it. He lives it every day. It happened in an instant. When it came in, it was as if our windows exploded inwards. Jason Warshaw and his partner awakened as a huge oak tree crashed through their home. How close were you then to being crushed by this thing? Uh, about six to ten feet. Now, four months later, the pair is finding out the process to repair the roof is not as instantaneous. Jason says he's had a contractor ready to fix the hole for months, but says the holdup is a permit from the city. Um, it is considered a, um, a, a build out. Um, we've tried to explain several times that we are simply repairing like for like, but the response uh, and the questions we keep getting seem to indicate there's some confusion as if we're adding an addition or building a new structure. Jason showed me emails to the city that say he is not making any improvements or changes to his home. I spoke with City Council President Felicia Moore and she says Jason isn't alone. In a statement, Moore says there are others in similar situations having issues with the Department of City Planning. She suspects the pandemic has played some part in the backlog of permits and suggests the department look at prioritising those needed for natural disaster recovery. It's an existing house, we're just looking to repair it. For Jason, he would just like to sleep in his bed again. I don't understand any confusion around falling tree damage. That, that seems pretty basic and blunt to me. So we just received a, a statement from the city a short time ago and they say preliminary information shows the homeowner was notified on February 24th that revisions were needed on the permit in order to complete the review process. The city is looking into the matter. Now I told Jason the city gave us that and he says that it's really not helpful at all. He's been through this whole thing, he's provided blueprints, told them what he's trying to do. He just really feels that they should let him fix the giant hole created by Zeta in his house. Live in Atlanta, Jamie Kennedy, CBS 46 News. Jamie, thank you. Breaking at 11, a man accused of faking car trouble to rob unsuspecting drivers is now in custody. Clayton County officers arrested Nicoli Ganucci on the side of I-75. Investigators say he flagged down a driver 
on Monday in Henry County, then pulled out a gun and robbed the victim. We're told he may have been trying to do the same thing when he was arrested. New details tonight. A man accused of shooting and paralyzing a cat near Buckhead is now in custody. Atlanta police arrested 20 year old Davis Marks after receiving an overwhelming amount of tips from the public. Marks is charged with animal aggravated animal cruelty. Shocking new video tonight. A young porch pirate caught on camera. You can see what appears to be a little girl stealing a package off someone's doorstep, then waving at their home security camera before she runs off. It happened outside of Charlotte, North Carolina earlier this week. And back here in Georgia, stealing a package from someone's porch, it could soon get you thrown in prison. Lawmakers are tired of seeing the same videos of porch pirates year after year. CBS 46's Haley Mason explains a new bill aimed to crack down on criminals. It's not just annoying, it's criminal. Porch pirates swiping long-awaited packages right from your front door. CBS 46 has talked to several victims in the past. It feels like a violation. I got an email from my neighbor later that afternoon saying he had a package stolen from his porch the day before. State Representative Bonnie Rich wants the misdemeanor crime to become a felony. The second portion of this bill is known as the porch piracy bill. She says the U.S. Postal Inspector and a Prosecutor's Council asked her to draft the bill, telling her the problem has gotten so big they couldn't prosecute all the cases. These are um, mostly misdemeanors because in order to qualify as a felony, um, the items stolen have to have a dollar value of more than 1500. Rich wants to remove the dollar value requirement and make the crime itself a felony, despite the cost of the package. One of the concerns that local prosecuting attorneys expressed to us is that um, the type of criminal who will approach the doorway or the threshold of someone's home is a much more brazen criminal. Opponents say porch piracy as a felony is too tough. HB 94 is a tough on crime bill, and we all know what tough on crime bills have gotten us. If we can relax even this much on our knee jerk responses to crime. It's the lowest level of felony, which carries a sentence of one to five years. It will always be within the discretion of the district attorney um, as to whether he or she will pursue the felony conviction of porch piracy, and that will depend upon the circumstances. This bill did pass the House floor with some bipartisan support. It will now head to Senate committees. Reporting inside the state capitol, Haley Mason, CBS 46 News. Tonight, legislation designed to strengthen anti-hazing laws in Georgia is surging forward. The bill is named after Max Groover. The Roswell teen died from alcohol poisoning after a 2017 fraternity hazing incident at Louisiana State University. Now, under the proposal, incidents causing serious injury, those would be punishable by up to five years in prison. Incidents resulting in death would be punishable by up to 10 years in prison. Fines would be enforced for all charges. I think no one should be able to tell a student to do something that they're not comfortable with, to be part of an association. The bill would also require all Georgia colleges and universities to submit an annual report detailing any hazing incidents. The plan just passed the Senate and now heads to the House. A man accused of hitting a firefighter with a car in driving off is now in custody tonight. DeKalb County Police say 67-year-old DeForest Denson is facing charges after getting a tip on their Facebook page. The firefighter was reportedly directing traffic on Covington Highway last month when he was struck. He's back home recovering tonight. Only on CBS 46, a new tool being tested in Gwinnett County could make classrooms safer for your child as in-person learning returns. CBS 46's Zach Summers has the first look at the technology designed right here in the metro. In the halls of Rock Springs Elementary School, we just started field testing. I can read and Is write a teacher's a assistant. Word. That's more than just a support system. There's a big opportunity here, right, uh, to help teachers and to help students. AI Puppy is a mobile robot nice. with human-like expressions I programmed to, to deliver many I lessons in the classroom. Today we are going to read a Dr. Seuss book, Hop on Pop, and discuss some of the rhyming words that we hear. Up, pup. Pup is up. 
It can answer commands and detect COVID-19 symptoms thanks to thermal and infrared cameras built into its visor. It takes the temperature at about a five foot distance um, and then through audio cues and other cues, we can also detect labored breathing and chronic cough. And I think, I think that that would give lots of teachers kind of peace of mind. Educators at Rock Springs say not only does the AI puppy help to maintain a safe environment, the robot offers a more engaging learning experience for students. We are a STEM-focused school. We enjoy uh, trying, to, trying new ideas, being innovative. Technology still in the prototype phase, but perhaps the future of education in a post-pandemic world. The AI puppy teacher's assistant will likely be ready to roll out in the classroom by the end of the month. The founders would like to see this technology also in senior homes and federal buildings in the near future. In Gwinnett County, Zach Summers, CBS 46 News.